Hey, what's up guys? Ratsma here from Team Temple Storm, and I'm here with, an, with another arena video. This one is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be getting into real specifics here, and uh, I have an interesting board for you. I suggest you take a good hard look at it, because this is all we're talking about in this video, is this situation, not exactly this situation, but a situation where your opponent has played a 2-1 on turn 1. They played a 1-mana 2-1 on turn 1, so don't mind this being an owl. Uh, we had to just take a, a quick screenshot, so I told him to play just a 2-1 and it happened to be an owl. But imagine it's a 1-mana 2-1. Um, and the main thing I want to talk to you guys is this right here. Do you ping with your hero power or do you play a 2-3? It sounds like a pretty, uh, pretty simple question, right? It's a pretty simple question, and maybe like, you know, maybe you do the same thing every single time. Maybe it's different. Um, I'm gonna show you how deep. Uh, eh, I, won't, I don't want to call it deep. Uh, let's see. Let's see like uh, how important pinging or playing a two mana two three is, and uh, what the difference is. Well, first let's go into like why we don't play a two mana three two. Um, you don't play a two mana three two because it does the same thing as ping. We're assuming you're a ping class right now. And you don't want to play a 2-mana 3-2 like a Puddle Stomper, because it'll die to a 2-1. Uh, but it can it is only it is strictly worse because it gives them the option to frostbolt it, or um, you know, it's just worse because you waste the card and you give them the option to not even uh, like trade. So it doesn't make any sense. So you in that case, yes, you ping if you only have 2-mana 3-2. But the very specific thing we're looking at is if we have a 2-mana two 2-3 two, in the hand, is it better to hero power and kill it as rogue, druid, or mage when we're playing those classes, or is it better to play a 2-mana two 2-3? Two, um, we can split this up into two parts, uh, when we're playing as player 2 and also as we're playing uh, as player 1. First we're going to go over player 2, because it's much, uh, a little bit more simple when we're looking at it from the perspective of us being player 2. So what you are really worried about as player 2 is you're already playing at a tempo disadvantage. The entire game you're going to be playing at a tempo disadvantage. They're going to be playing the bigger guy on you um, uh, a turn earlier and they're going to have initiative with that bigger minion every single turn. So as player 2, if your opponent plays a 1 mana 2 1, you kind of have to look at your, your, your hand. You kind of look at, look at your hand first. Do you have a 3 drop? Um, so, if you if we're a player 2, that means our opponent plays a 1 drop, we would have to coin to ping out. We would have to coin to ping out. So do you have a 3 drop? Do you have a 2 drop? Uh, do you have removal on your turn 2? You don't want to... The worst thing you could do is not have another 2 drop to follow up your first uh, 2 drop. And especially, it is especially worse if your second 2 drop is a 3-2. And I'll explain to you why. So let's imagine that we're player 2, and this mana crystal here doesn't exist, right? Yeah, I'm using pit, MS Paint. Pretty uh, pretty cool, right? We're player 1, and we have the coin. We have the coin right here. If we coin out a 2-3, and we only have a Puddle Stomper to follow it up, we're giving our opponent a chance to use something like Wrath or Frostbolt or Dark Bomb, whatever class they're playing, to remove it. And in that situation, on turn 2, we're forced to ping, because once again, 3-2, there's no point in playing a 3-2 into a 2-1 when the ping does the same thing, but doesn't waste a card. So it's a little bit less powerful in that case, but if you do have another 2-3, maybe it's a viable option, and we'll go into that right now. So if you have another 2-3, it's a little bit more okay to go into this 2-3 uh, into 2-3 play. It does get you further ahead, but you also want to consider, do you have a 3-drop? And this is what I asked earlier. Do you have a good curve going out, or do you need the coin to help fix your curve for future turns? Like, if you have a 2-2, two, two, like a 2-mana two 2-3 two, like we have exactly right here, right? Um, it seems a little bit more okay, but what if on turn 3 you don't draw into a play? Then on turn 3 you're forced to slow down. In that case, I would say that it's a little bit worse, because you might want to just play reactively. You can do like a pass, pass it back, and then see if he has a play. Or you can do, go coin ping to... Um, if you go into the coin ping route, um, instead of coining out the snow chugger, then at least on turn 3, you can play your other 2-3, right? 
So you can see that uh, that's important. Your curve is important. Also, your dex curve is important. Is your deck really slow? Uh, is it really uh, awkward? Do you need the coin to like fix your deck because you ended up with a deck with you know maybe way too many three drops or way too many four drops? In decks like that, the coin is really powerful to uh, curve you up more smoothly. So you want to consider those. <laughs> and one more thing is, as player two, you have the option if you do coin out a two three, it's a little bit worse if your opponent is also playing a pink class. Um, I would like almost never suggest, just, I want to say, I'll give you guys some like almost certain answers here, so it's not so ambiguous here. So against Rogue especially, since their hero power sticks twice, um, you don't want them to actually have a turn hero powering, because very often Rogue's game plan revolves around hero powering on turn 2. So assuming it's not like a Buccaneer, you don't want to like, uh, if you like coin a 2 mana 2 3, you're allowing their hero power to do something. So, in the case of like Mage and Druid, they're pinging and you're giving them a turn. So, where possibly they don't have a 2 drop, right? If they don't have a 2 drop, they can't develop it, then you're give, making their hero power useful. They're, they just traded their 1 drop up for your 2 drop. So, against those classes, maybe it's a little bit more powerful if. The, po uh, the previous prerequisites are there, where you have you know a good two drop, a good three drop, uh, and your your curve is fine. Then maybe um, then I think it's perfectly fine to coin ping, because you know you're not giving them a turn. If you coin two drop, you're not giving them a frostbolt or a wrath or or anything to use uh, to counter your play. And yeah, uh, another consideration. Is the better the better your like three drop and like your future plays are against that existing two one. So for example, you have a two three, and we talked about this with the follow up two three. Is um, then it's fine to try to get ahead. So instead of coin pinging, maybe you want to go into like coin two three into another two three, and let's say on turn three you have a harvest golem. So that makes it good in the case that you know you coin out a two three and. You know, they frostbolt it. Okay, that's fine. You play another 2-3, that means you're you're trying to get ahead again. And they play like a Forgotten Torch, or maybe they frostbolt again, whatever, right? But you have a Harvest Golem the third time. You have a Harvest Golem, and a Harvest Golem does not still trades it really well against a 2-1, right? It trades extremely well against a 2-1, so it's fine to go into that line, because they're going to have to have three answers in a row, and at the end of that, more than likely, you'll be ahead tempo-wise, and you'll be controlling the game. And that's the most important thing, is you want to be in control of the game. And uh, that way you don't have bad trades on you, because Arena is mostly about uh, making smart trades. And you want to set yourself up in a position where you can make smart trades. So, what conclusion have we come to? Uh, the stronger your future plays and your future turns are, um, the better the coin 2-3 is as player 2. Um, the more you want to get ahead, and the weaker your curve is, maybe possibly even passing is better, or coin ping is better, because it does not uh, give them counterplay, and they can't use like their hero power, or they can't use like a, like a dark bomb or a frostbolt, they don't have a spell, so they possibly might even miss their 2 drop, uh, 2 turn. And that's a big thing, is you don't want to give them a turn. You don't want to give them a turn, you don't want to give them a chance to use their hero power, or a frostbolt from the hand. Um, that's a huge deal unless you have a strong curve. So that's that is uh, that is uh, pretty much the easy one. That's player two. Player one it gets a little bit more complicated. So imagine this: your player one, you you passed your turn one. You don't have a one drop. Your opponent is player two, and they played a one drop. Okay, they played a one mana two one, and now you're on your uh, turn two. You're on your natural turn two, you don't have the coin, you're player one, and you can ping or you can play a two three. Let's uh let's talk about like the harvest golem again. If you haven't harvest golem, then once again you can play the uh you can play the snow chugger. Oh that's cool. That's cool, we can do that. You can play this you can play the snow chugger. Okay, you can play the snow chugger. <laughs> oh my god. You can play the snow chugger, that's a two mana two three. And then even if they uh, follow it up as with like a frostbolt or anything to remove it, then you have the harvest golem. I wish I had a harvest golem that I could put up there. You can play the harvest golem and you'll still be ahead, right? But for example, 
if you have like a Raging Worgen or something that doesn't trade favorably, uh, maybe even like a Scarlet Crusader that's, you know, you don't really want to run into it 2-1, then maybe, you know, pinging is better. Oh yes, this is so good. You can ping it like this. This is probably really distracting for you guys, sorry. Um, another thing to consider as player one is imagine you don't have follow-up. Imagine this is our hand, okay? We have a bunch of late game and nothing to play next turn. How do we fill out our curve, right? Um, here, the better play would be to ping. That way, you ping this turn on turn two, and then on turn three, you have you still have a play with the snow chugger. That way, you don't you can you have like plans set out for your turns. You're not you always want to be doing something with your with your turn, and you want to have plans set out for your future turns. So, you know, turn two we'll just trade, and then turn three we'll we'll play our snow snow chugger. A little bit worse than a three drop, but at least we're playing something. This has the added benefit of not so you not only are playing things on your turns, right, which is important, it also has the added benefit of not giving him counterplay on his turn two, right? So if we ping here, what is he going to do? If he doesn't have a 2-drop, he doesn't have anything to ping, he passes a turn, all of a sudden we have initiative with snow chugger, and that's pretty good, right? Um, so you don't want to like needlessly try to get ahead when you have no no follow-up, right? You don't want to start a fight when you can't back it up, you don't want to snow chugger and say, this is pretty much you announcing like, hey dude, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm, I'm trying to get ahead on this turn. Next turn, I have this crazy three drop to throw at you, so you better like, uh, you better be scared that we're gonna get ahead of you. It's not a good idea without, uh, without the proper follow up. So, um, let's see what else we got here. So, considerations: Are you giving them a turn with the ping if they're playing Mage, Druid, or Rogue? That's not good. Um, are you possibly giving them a turn with 2-drop removal? And keep an eye out on what class you're facing up against. Uh, class like Paladin, he doesn't have a 2-drop removal for a 2-3. They only have Argent Lance, right? They only have Argent Lance. And there are things like Dire Wolf, which would help the trade, but if in that case, then, you know, do you have follow-up 3 and is that 3-drop beat that Dire Wolf? Probably, right? Most 3-drops are really good against uh, Dire Wolf. And stuff like that. Just make sure you 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 see like, oh, do they have a two cost spell that could potentially remove my two three? Then maybe the two drop is a little bit worse than the ping. And do you have follow up? And I could go over like every single scenario, but that would take a long time. I think if you just understand the concept of, you know, um, making sure you curve out correctly, and also making it a little bit harder for your opponent to uh, play back at you. And the harder you make uh, make make the play back, the harder you make the counterplay for your opponent, the better. And also, uh, the stronger your curve, the better. The more you want to get ahead early, you got to follow it up with something like this into this is fine, but. This into not having a 2-drop or a 3-drop or anything to play into 3 is less fine. You would rather do this and then play this on turn 3. Man, I'm having too much fun with MS Paint right now. Kind of scared for myself. Um, let's see, what else we got? So if your opponent is playing a class that is really rushy, right? Warlocks, Hunters, and Paladins tend to be a little bit uh, faster. And especially with Paladin, once they get the board lead, there a lot more cards are active. So you want to grab the board early against them. So you're playing a very against a class that is famous for being aggressive, then you might want to counter that aggression with a 2-3. Um, and this might supersede the fact that you don't have follow-up. Okay, so even though we said you want to play a 2-3 only if you have follow-up, um, it might. You, you have to think about these scenarios very um, uh, in their specific uh, situations. Uh, especially, and also look at the 1-drop. Is it a good one, like high quality 1-drop that normal people would pick? Or is it like a, uh, like a high quality 1-drop that normal people would pick would be like an abusive sergeant, right? It's not a bad card. But if it's something like a Murloc Raider, a Murloc Raider no one picks unless their deck is extremely rushy, then you might be like, oh shit, like, I gotta get ahead of this. So you gotta keep your eye out for that as well. 
Um, but if you're playing against a class that is generally really rushy, you might want to just get ahead and do this, and then um, try to get ahead. And also, classes that are rushy tend to be more proactive, and so they have more minions than removal, so you're not giving them a turn generally. So that whole thing about removing counterplay applies more to slower classes where, you know, they, they would, druids would have wrath, Priests would have uh, Shadow or Pain, or you know, uh, Mages would have Frostbolt. But Warlocks generally are not trying to you know uh, play reactively. They're trying to play more proactively, and they're gonna be like one drop, two drop, three drop, bam, bam, bam. They're just dropping minions on you, and uh, maybe in that case you want to play the two three to get ahead. Um, also, another thing I want to talk about is if you have removal follow up. So let's say that this this beautiful frost wolf or beautiful uh, Amani is like a frost bolt, right? Let's say that this is a frost bolt. Um, then it's less it's less good to try to get ahead because what you're doing is just like how I, I talked about the warlock just now and how they want to play minions they want to go boom 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 drop 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 your strategy should be the same but backwards so if you drop this you're saying that you have a three drop minion to follow up but if you don't have that three drop minion to follow up but you have like a frost bolt or a forgotten torch to follow up you playing this allows them to ping here and trade like this, right? These two trade for the thing, and now all of a sudden you have a very lonely Frostbolt or Forgotten Torch in your hand, and you're like, oh, I don't have anything to play on turn three. I guess I just ping his face, and then you're sad. That looks ugly. And now, then you're now you're really sad because you just gave up your turn. So what you do by fro like, let's say that this is, we'll keep this as Frostbolt, right? This Amani is Frostbolt. If you have the Frostbolt in your hand, then what you want to do is you want to get behind. So maybe you want to ping, and they play the 2-drop, and then you're like, haha, Frostbolt, you know? Or if it's a if it's a card that trades maybe better with Snow Chugger, you can drop the Snow Chugger, you're playing reactively. So you gotta keep that in consideration too. Is your follow-up removal, or is your follow-up a, a high-quality minion that trades well with current minion on board? And this can be applied, this kind of like thought process, can and should be applied to all your turns. All your turns, not only this uh, very specific, you know, one mana two one on their turn one, uh, and your player one or two. So if you think in this way, you'll definitely be uh, a much stronger player, especially with the turn planning and your cur looking at your curve and the whole, you know, making uh, removing counterplay uh, issue. And we'll talk. Well, I'll add a little bonus to uh, the whole counterplay thing. In a second, uh, at the towards the end of the video, actually, and uh, we can talk about some fringe scenarios here. Let's say that your your opponent is rogue. Let's say that your opponent is rogue and they play buccaneer. I love this one. Um, I played a lot of uh, arenas, and rogue is definitely the flavor of the month for this month. Uh, a lot of people have been playing rogue and liking rogue, and buccaneer is a very popular uh, choice of card. And whenever you see a Buccaneer played on one and you're playing a pink class, I would say I would not have said this before because I don't like claiming that something is always right. But I've seen that in almost all my games that I've come to the conclusion that coining out the hero power to kill it or even if I'm player, uh, player one and they're player two, just hero powering it was the right play. So if you do see Buc Buccaneer, don't don't be afraid to uh, just like panic coin hero power or just hero power at the Buccaneer. Um, and you can also think it think it through with the rules that I gave you and the things to think about. And you will also come to that conclusion that uh, the hero power is the right play. Uh, another fringe scenario is if your opponent is playing as player two and you're player one, they have the one drop out and now you're on turn two and you have your natural 2 mana um, and they have the 2-1 and they're priest so if they're priest one thing you always watch out for is uh, from priest is for them that to get ahead in the early game because no a lot of classes snowball but no class snowball is quite like priest since they're adding two stats to the point and also it's stats that uh, sustain their board and that's the most terrifying thing 
So if they have a 2-1, you always got to be thinking in the back of your head, are they going to coin Valence, right? Are they going to coin Valence? Because if they coin Valence, all of a sudden a 2-3, which trades amazingly well, just does so poorly. Because after the coin Valence, the coin Valence is going to be a 4-5, and it's a 4-3. And this is especially bad because your player one, you a lot of 3-drops don't have uh, the ability to kill it. Because although it's a 4-3, um, you could, you're, you might think, hey, I could play uh, this Raging Morgan or this Scarlet Crusader, it'll trade. No, it will not. Because because they have that heal hero power, it can sustain that 4-3 and make it 4-5 again. So you got to think about that as well. So if they have the possibility for a coin, coin balance play, you should try to remove it unless you have removal. If you have removal, I think it's okay to play the 2-3 to try to get ahead. Maybe it's even better to play the 2-3 to get ahead. If you have a solid plan for them to coin Valence and you for you to recover, then it's a little bit more okay for you to try to get ahead there. But otherwise, removing it may be your best game plan because once that pre snowballs, it is, it is very likely game over. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, a quick overview. Or, I guess like the conclusion we come to is, how good is your curve? Is your 2-drop, your follow-up 2-drop, your follow-up 3-drop good against that 2-1? If it's like a Harvest Golem, then a little, little bit better to coin hero power, or coin 2-3. A little bit better to coin hero... Ah, uh, I'm saying, saying it again. Then it's a little bit better to coin out your 2-mana two 2-3. Two, if you have a, a good curve that continues to be good against that 2-1. Because you can take that risk of them removing that play and then you have another play that beats beats the 2-1. Um, if you don't have a good follow-up then you probably want to go with hero power and uh, then the fringe scenarios we talked about are they playing a really aggressive class then you might want to get ahead earlier and play it uh, even though you don't have follow-up um, like how much counterplay are you giving your opponent a hero power counterplay with the 2-1 to trade you don't want to be doing that if they're playing Mage, Druid, or Rogue. It's a little bit worse in that case. Are you giving them a chance to use Fra Frostbolt or Dark Bomb? Then it's a little bit worse. And then with Buccaneer, you want to almost always ping. And then with... Uh... Man, this music is really distracting. Give me one second. Okay. And... Uh... Lastly, with like Priest, you gotta really plan out what you're gonna do in the case that he has Valence, in the case that he doesn't, right? You gotta really be careful of that. And that's, this is pretty much a one-drop guide. It's pretty much a guide to uh, doing doing well against the uh, one-man two-one start, because it can be very terrifying, and I do see a lot of bad plays when I do play my own arenas. I see a lot of bad plays against my own one-drop starts, uh, where they like kind of like coin ping and then they have no follow up. They, you know, then in that case where you're gonna coin ping and then not do anything, you might as well have saved the coin, taken two extra damage, and just hero powered it on the next turn, right? And uh, let's talk about one more scenario. Uh, this is an interesting one, and this one is not as simple because it's in the mid game. A lot of different things can happen. So let's say, chill win, yeah. What's up, bro? All right. So your opponent has a Chilvin Yeti. Uh, don't mind the class. The class does not matter here. Uh, I just want to talk in general. Uh, not going to get into too too many specifics here. So they have a Chilvin Yeti on board. You're on your turn four. Uh, or you just have a, like a um, like a four five or a five four something that trades somewhat evenly with the four five, right? Do you play that, or do you play something that removes it? Do you play your fireball, or do you play your yeti? Which one is better? Uh, and we can talk about this one for much longer than we talked about the one drop uh, one man two one one. Um, and the, the answer really is you the same. The answer really is the same. You got to look at your curve. Like, do you have follow-up plays? Um, is your opponent playing something very aggressive where you might want to remove that aggression right away? And, but the very much simpler answer would be 
you know what? I want to remove my opponent's chance at a counterplay. What if my opponent only has removal? What if they only have Shadow or Pain, Shadow or Deaths? What if they only have Fireballs and Flame Lances or, you know, only Swipe? Then in that case, you... Uh, then you... In that case, you would probably want to use like a Fireball to remove it instead of playing your Yeti, right? Because if you Fireball to kill his Yeti, boom, you end your turn. If now it's your opponent's chance to play something, they don't have anything to play from their hand, they skip. And all of a sudden you get to play your Yeti on an empty board, and they're behind a turn. They're behind an entire turn, and that's extremely powerful. Um, this is not always the case, and um, this is not always the case where playing the removal is better. Maybe you're playing a deck that has not that much removal and you need to save it. Um, save it for you know a more critical target, then maybe you want to play the Yeti and take that risk. And you want to look at your curve and really plan out your plays to see if you know it is right to remove it or to play this, uh, play something, um, play a minion, play your Yeti into it. Uh, you know, if you have a five drop, right? Uh, let's say you have a pit fighter. So if you have a pit fighter, then hell yeah, you know, play your five four, play your five four up against it. Let it let it trade. If he doesn't trade and he has fireball, fine, that's cool. Um, you're gonna play a five six, which actually doesn't trade evenly, but gets you ahead. Right, that's the key right there. That's the key right there. Is it gets you ahead. If your next play actually beats that, then it's probably a little bit stronger to play the four drop and let it let put let him push in four damage, um, and you try to get ahead on the next turn. And this game is all about if you're behind, how do I get ahead on board and control the game? So if you don't and your five drop is like a spiteful smith or and you can't ping you're not playing a ping here power or your five drop just sucks like this one this five mana four four then it is a little bit more important for you to use your fireball to remove it you always got to look at what is the outcome of him removing my board or removing my minion and uh that's it i don't know if you guys like this type of video um i did into more specifics, especially with the one mana two one, and uh, you just want to really think about, just like really think uh, a couple turns ahead, think about what your opponent might do, and that's what the video video is really about. It's not really about any specific scenario. It's thinking about uh, your opponent's counterplay and thinking about your future turns. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did. Press like, uh, tell me what, what you guys want to see on the next video. I am actually running out of ideas, believe it or not. Actually, not really. I have a lot of ideas. It's just it's very hard to uh, make them come alive. But any uh, ideas or ideas for future videos that you guys want to see, just leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll check them out. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you guys later. You can catch me on Twitch.tv. Peace out. Bye-bye.